I have always looked forward to Mass on Holy Thursday. After so many weeks of purple vestments during Lent, the Holy Thursday Mass is celebrated in white vestments. The Gloria is sung, the bells ring, and there is usually a solemn procession bearing the Blessed Sacrament out of the church to a provisional altar. That night, I can spend an hour there in union with Jesus in his agony prayer in the garden. He had asked his apostles to watch and pray with him, but they fell asleep, prompting Jesus to complain sorrowfully, could you not watch one hour with me? As I sit there on Holy Thursday night, I can sympathize with the apostles as I become drowsy and my mind wanders. Above all, on Holy Thursday, we recall the Last Supper, or to put it better, we reenact the Last Supper and keep it alive among us to this day. Just as the Jews continue to observe the Passover every year in memory of that miraculous deliverance from the slavery of Egypt. Why do we do this? One of the children asks during the Holy Seder. And the history of the Exodus is retold and relived. Even before we Christians ask, why do we do this? The answer is given right in the middle of the liturgy. Jesus says, do this in memory of me. And not only on Holy Thursday, but in every reenactment of the Last Supper, every celebration of the Eucharist. Jesus says, do this in memory of me. And we might ask, do what? What do we do in memory of Jesus at Mass? We remind ourselves of what Jesus did at the Last Supper. Knowing what was about to happen to him, he gathered his closest disciples, not necessarily only the twelve apostles, for what he knew would be his final meal with them in the context of the Passover delivery from Egypt. He himself was about to make his own Passover from this world into the arms of the Father in such a way as to make it possible for us to enter into that Passover to the Father with Jesus. The Gospel of John, which we read on Holy Thursday, tells us that during the meal, Jesus gets up, takes water and a basin, and goes around to wash the feet of each disciple present. They are shocked by this action, usually performed only by menial servants. But after finishing, Jesus asks, Do you understand what I have done for you? If I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also should do as I have done and wash one another's feet. In this profound act of humility, Jesus is seen as the ideal man for others, and he gives us a new commandment. Love one another, he says, as I have loved you. His love for us is the new norm of how we are to love and serve one another. In Luke's Gospel of the Last Supper, we are told that the disciples had been arguing among themselves about who was the greatest. Maybe they were fighting over who would get seats close to Jesus. But Jesus admonishes them, the kings of the pagans have power over their people, but this is not the way it is with you. Rather, the greatest among you must be like the youngest, and the leader must be like the servant. I am among you as one who serves. Though Luke does not report the washing of the disciples' feet, he makes the same point about the duty of serving one another. Strangely enough, perhaps, John does not recount what all three other Gospels and an epistle of St. Paul report, that during the meal, Jesus took bread and wine and gave them to the disciples, telling them that this was his body offered and his blood poured out for them. Of course, they did not understand right away what this meant, but looking back on it after the tragic death of Jesus, they realized that he meant it as his way of remaining with them after he was gone. By then, they knew that he was not really gone. After rising from the dead, he would always be with them and with us in his glorious presence. When we take part in the symbolic sacrament and are nourished by receiving his body. 
In the words of the ancient prayer, Anima Christi, we pray, Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. O good Jesus, hear me. Never let me be separated from you. Let's go back to the Holy Thursday Liturgy. Once the Blessed Sacrament has been carried away after the Mass, the candles and decorations are removed from the sanctuary. The altar is stripped bare, the tabernacle is left open, and the sanctuary lamp is extinguished. We feel that something important is missing, and we begin our journey through the Passion on Good Friday. First, by sharing Jesus' agony with the hour of prayer I spoke about earlier. What kind of prayer will it be? Stay here and watch with me, he says. Just to be there with him is enough. You don't have to say much. You can hear him cry out, Father, but you will also hear him say, Your will be done. Join with him in that prayer. If you feel moved to do so, you can pray for yourself, for your loved ones, and for the world now ravaged by a fearful pandemic. But as Jesus told us, the Father knows what we need even before we mention it. Allow the Spirit to pray in the silence of your heart or amid all the confusion and distraction you may feel. The Spirit comes to help us, weak as we are, pleading with God for us in groans that words cannot express. And God sees into our hearts and knows what the Spirit is praying through us. May the Lord continue to fill you with the blessings of this very unusual Holy Week.